Bible. So you let me know. Okay. Good evening and, and welcome to our monthly meeting of the Hampton Beach Area Commission. If you would all stand and make the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I ask all of you to uh, stand for one second. Um, I would like to, um, um, like other groups within the, uh, the community, uh, have a, a moment of silence for a uh, firefighter who lost his uh, life recently um, and uh, uh, a man who has shown to many of us uh, what the strength of living really was until he, he passed last week, uh, Mr. Jameson. Thank you. Okay, um, by way of uh, introduction of the commissioners, let me uh, start with my left. Uh, Mr. Preston representing the Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Watson representing DOT, Mr. Rage representing the Hampton Beach Village District, myself and Rick Griffin representing the Town of Hampton, Fran McMahon representing the Rockingham Planning Commission, uh, Bob Ladd repre representing the Hampton Beach Village District, Mike Hausman representing uh, the Dredge State Parks. Welcome everybody, and uh, we do not have any public comment tonight, I don't believe, so we'll go right to the appointments. Um, and I've asked uh, both Senator Stiles and William Rose to give us updates mm -hmm. on some of the uh, aspects that we're all been involved with uh, in terms of transportation. So welcome Senator Stiles, and if you could just give us a quick update. I know you have a busy schedule tonight, so we appreciate you coming. Well, good evening. Uh, it will be a quick update. <laughs> You asked me to let you know what's going on with the 10-year plan as far as Hampton, especially the beach, is concerned. And um, I will share with you that uh, most of you have probably met our commissioner, the new commissioner. Um, she and her team are doing great stuff. They really are. They're, they're working hard to do everything that they can to make uh, New Hampshire a better place and a, as far as transportation goes. Um, and at her suggestion, actually, um, the um, deputy found some extra money. He scrubbed some of the um, projects and, that had been closed out, so we had some lapse money, and we were able to move some projects forward, including the uh, engineering for uh, Ocean Boulevard. So it was originally scheduled for 21-22, and it now will be scheduled for 1920. So we were able to move it up a couple of years. They'll do the study, and then they'll go right into the engineering of the project. Um, She's been down here several times to look at the project, and I know uh, she realizes that something needs to be done uh, with, uh, with Route 1A. So I am optimistic that we will see some good action from the department. And as far as the 10-year plan goes, um, to my surprise this morning, uh, the House decided to uh, ask for committee conference on the 10-year plan, so I was a little concerned about what, just what was up their sleeve. And it had to do with a couple of other things, not specifically this project. So um, while it, everything in the in the plan will be open during the committee conference, um, I will protect this. Okay, um, Senator. So just so, and probably best for the people uh, watching uh, this uh, this meeting, from when it goes out of this house conference and everybody approves it. It then goes to the governor for final signature? Correct. Okay. And when does that usually take place? Uh, sometime in June? Well, um, it'll have to come out of the uh, committee conference and be voted on by both houses again um, June 1st. Okay. So it's got to travel its little path. I'm guessing probably mid-June, mid-June, to get okay. to the governor's desk. The governor has five, once it lands on her desk, she has five days to sign it. Okay. So it will then become an actual public document, approved public document. That's correct. By mid-June. That's okay. correct. Now, you are aware that the 10-year plan is reviewed every two years, so we just have to keep our eyes on it and make sure that it stays in as well as the bridge project kind of gets increased and moved up a little. And, and, and once again, for the benefit of the commissioners here, um, with that money, 
that has now been earmarked, and I believe between the first uh, earmark and then the, now the second, it's about six point two five million, if I'm not mistaken. The total so quarter of a million dollars for the first one and six million for the second. The total package is eight, but, <clears throat> but what we move forward uh, in the process was a million. Okay. We moved a million forward, so. Okay. So, so the point being that as we now continue to watch every two years, there's still always a possibility that we could move some of that money that's out in 2021 even closer if right. we have the engineering uh, that's completed and we finish our project uh, with uh, the type of project that we're working on now that would give us the opportunity to expedite if, if we could. Uh, some money mo being moved forward, correct? Correct. And there are two representatives here from the DOT, and I'm sure that they're in the field and they know probably as much about the whole project as I do. So. Okay. Um. And and the and the bridge. Would you just mind making a comment or two about the bridge? Because I think even though that that's way out, I think you know the, the more information that we can share with the general public now, the better. Twenty-two it to be. twenty-six. Uh, there's 43 million uh, proposed for that. However, it does say rehab. So I think we need to work on that. Okay. Once they do the engineering of 1A and they look at the bridge, maybe we can do something about that. Okay. All right. Any commissioners have any questions for the senator? Hearing none, Senator, I know you're very busy, so thank you very much for coming tonight. You're welcome. And, Anytime. Uh, and I'll Please keep us posted if there's any changes between now and mid June. I will. I will. All right. We're meeting Monday morning at nine. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Next, we um, I asked, um, knowing that we were going to be uh, uh, not meeting this summer, uh, I wanted to make sure that this last meeting uh, before the summer break that we get an update from William on where we are with the transportation grant. Um, and uh, so I asked him to kind of come in and just at a, at a high level give us um, some of the updates, uh, things that have been completed, things that still need to be completed. Um, is there anything that's happening over the next couple of months that we should be aware of uh, where we are with money? And just, just some real general comments um, and then also give the opportunity to the commissioners to um, uh, ask questions uh, of William. Um, I can tell you that William and I have spent a fair amount of time on the phone um, <coughs> in between meetings, uh, so he has been able to keep me fully abreast of what's been going on. Um, and um, uh, as I said, I, I really would like to have William give the full commission an update. So William, I, I know this is uh, a night meeting for you, so I appreciate you taking that extra time and coming to uh, Hampton. And, and spending some time with the commissioners. <coughs> Not a problem. <clears throat> so what uh, what I just handed out there is the finer level detail update on where we are. I think you saw, I believe you saw uh, a portion of this in March at your March meeting with an update. But what it does is it just lays out uh, task by task uh, on a contract level basis what the, the original deadlines were for task order one, where we are in terms of completion, and if things aren't complete, what's holding them up. Uh, this has been changed, or added to rather, uh, if you turn to page seven, it also now includes a summary report on task order number two. Task order number two on this project, if you remember, is an expansion of the project scope from where it originally terminated, just uh, shy of Boar's Head, from that point all the way up to the intersection of Winnicott Road along 1A. We do, that is, that work is in progress. That task order was executed uh, back in March, and I expect uh, work to be complete somewhere in the neighborhood of June 8th. It's a three-month task order. So that's the high-level stuff. Okay. How much detail do you want to get into? How about... Um can you, can you just share with us from what you know uh, and, and, and working with Gordon and his team, um, is there anything that's coming up over the next three, four months that we should be aware of? Any, any type of um, project task, any, any major um, 
requirements that you have given to Gordon to have completed that we should be aware of during the summer months? Yes, I was actually going to save the bad news for last, John, but um, it's, it's good news, bad news. It's good news in that there's progress uh, that we're making on the study and moving towards where we want to be, which is transitioning from talking about to, to looking at some real serious considerations regarding design. Uh, but in order to do that, this commission needs to make some decisions as far as what your preferred options are. As you remember, Gordon's BHB staff has put several options on the table for consideration. We've had numerous conversations both here, uh, not in this room, but with this, with this group, with the public. Uh, and as John, I'm sure, has already updated the group, there were some meetings that were held with uh, pertinent staff at the town level as well as with DREAD in Concord at their offices to talk through the initial recommendations and get some feedback on those. But that feedback's been incorporated and, and there's been another look taken at some of the options that were offered. Uh, but in order to, to advance beyond, again, that discussion, I'm expecting, uh, and VHB is, is uh, committed to, getting this in a place where if you were talking about having a June meeting, for example, we would be prepared to come back and present kind of a final list of recommendations for consideration. Okay. So your plan, I guess the bad news part is if your plan was not to have any meetings over the summer, I just ruined that. That's the bad news. <laughs> but if, if we were to call a special meeting of the commission strictly on this agenda item, uh, in June, mm -hmm. um, the that would then give us a couple of months. Say, if if we're saying having VHB make the presentation to us in 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 June uh, in June, let us then as commissioners go back to our designated um, representatives and say, here's you know what what we've seen so far, uh, what out of all of these alternatives, which one would you think would be the best? And then come back in September with a final recommendation of what our choices are, A, B, and C? I mean, is that something that could be doable? If that's the schedule the board prefers, then yes. Yep. I mean, I, I, I would feel comfortable, and I'll let the other commissioners speak if they want, um, to have each of us go back to our organization and say, look it, here's where we are right now with our transportation grant. Here are the alternatives. You as an organization that I'm representing, here's my recommendation, but do you, organization, RPC, um, Chamber of Commerce, State Parks, do you agree with the positioning of our priorities? And just to get them to once again sign off on that and we could do that during the summer months and then be prepared in September to come back and say for example mr. person I've spoken to the Chamber of Commerce um, here are the alternatives of um, a B and C on Ocean Boulevard uh, Chamber of Commerce my recommendation and along with the Chamber of Commerce's recommendation is a versus B um, and then go through that whole process with the different organizations. That, is that something that commissioners um, could feel comfortable doing so that we are not having a quick meeting in June and then making a decision mm -hmm. just by ourselves without going back and, and giving that organization that we represent a final look at what, we're, what we would want to present? Michael? I think so, yeah. I think that timeline works, yep. Yep. Bob? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Fran? Yeah, it's just the RPC doesn't typically meet in the summer, but um, they think will work on that. Okay. And, and Rick, I think we could d deal with the Board of Selectmen in the summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Mr. Watson, you don't have a say in this one. Um. <laughs> well, I have a question, though, for all of you to consider. What does that do to the back end? of having a goal for the, the final yeah. report to be completed? Uh, well, I mean, I don't know that it sets any insurmountable obstacles in our path, but we do have a hard end date, I believe, of 2018 for the contract. There are no extensions, either to dollars or time, based on the type of contract we're into. So okay. when, do, when do, would you need to know from us after we, after we have 
Yeah, I think in the discussion. right. I think where we're at, uh, the way things work. I think as we talked about last year, July and August are tough times for you to meet. Period, regardless of a desire to or otherwise, it's just mm -hmm. difficult based on schedules. Um, but I would like to meet in June, and I would like to present, and I would like to give you the information. If you want to go back and consult, that's that's fine. That's appropriate. Um, just with the understanding that July and August will essentially be downtime for the project. Bill so it doesn't kill things, Bill, like is, is the short answer. Bob, are you okay with that? I think we're all in favor of anything that will make this beach better. Yeah. All right. So on the new business, we can come back and uh, look at uh, everybody's schedule for the month of June. Um, do you have, William, uh, a preference? What part of June? If we wanted to talk about a month from now, that'd be a good place to start. Okay. All right. And then what we would be able to do is, through Bill tonight, let you know yeah. what the date is, and then mm -hmm. we can work, um, and we'll call a special meeting strictly to talk about this subject. And once again, we can always let the public know. So if anybody from the public wants to listen to what the final draft report will be, It'll give them an opportunity, also, right? Uh, yeah, just it won't be the final draft yet. Well, headed in that direction. Though. Yes, heading. I know what you're saying. Okay, okay. Um, where are we with? Uh, are we still okay with our in kind? Yes. Um, so everything is on schedule with our in kind. We so far so good. Okay. And the matching of dollars spent versus the in-kind is still right on? Because I know that uh, Federal Highway says before you spend a dollar, you have to have kind of a well, in -kind dollar? Not quite. Not okay. quite. Um, what has to happen is in order for us to spend, to expend any of the federal dollars, we have to show that we have a reasonable plan for accruing match okay. that will match that. And that we have in place. And I think when we talked last in March, uh, it was going according to plan. Okay. So we are matched. So then our next in-kind report will be due in um, the uh, end of June, early July period? July. Yep. Okay. Any questions from anybody with regard to uh, the, the grant? Hearing none, William, thank you very much. You, you oh. look like you have a question, Bill. Bill? No? Just, just have that look on your face. Well, thank you very much. I guess what I'd, what I'd like to ask, though, is based on what you're reading, what you're seeing and hearing, is this progressing according to your initial intent with the project? Is this going the way you'd like? Great question. Okay. I mean, it's not really, it's just a question. Um, so if something, what, what would be your estimate of when this project would come to fruition? Like, when would they start doing the road? When would it be completed? I know it's a long time out there, and I'm not suggesting it should be different. Just For actual construction of the identified alternatives? And completion. Yeah. That, uh, you're getting outside my prognostication abilities, and you're getting into 10-year plan territory. So Senator Stiles would have been a mm -hmm. better person. Or we could put Bill Watson on the spot. I think the... I think the reconstruction project is in 23 or 24 in a 10 year plan. Mm -hmm. I'd have to look to, to confirm it. But um, it could be moved forward. Well, that's that was the senator's comment is that yeah. every two years the 10 year plan is updated. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this, but this, what this work does, and William mentioned, but 2018 is the hard deadline that this portion of the study has to be done. So, we have this funding, and then through Councillor Sununu and prior 10 year plan updates, we have. Uh, the next step, which would be engineering study, getting down to a little bit lower altitude than we are right now with the master plan update. And then the senator talked about the million dollars of engineering funds that have been moved up into the 1920 time frame. Gets us down onto the ground with the actual real design mm -hmm. uh, so that we could be ready to go shortly thereafter for construction. Um, uh, you know, the duration and the scheduling depends on how far we go from south end to north end. It depends on timing of, of construction, how much is done. Is there anything done 
during the summer season? Is it done all off season? Mm -hmm. um, things like that. Many, many different issues to figure out the duration, mm -hmm. how long the construction will actually take. Right. But um, so but it's some time out. Yeah, we still got some time. Okay, thank you. But which let me follow up with what Rick was saying because I think it's important for the commissioners to know that let, let, let's assume that we have a very clear selection of alternatives uh, for both task order one and two in September. Mm -hmm. At that point, it then starts moving towards the financial considerations of the different alternatives, correct? Uh, that's part of the consideration. We're also intended on <clears throat> Yeah, jump starting the conversation or the process of engineering design. Okay. We're, the idea here again is to vet the concepts and then take those preferred alternative concepts that are identified by the area commission and begin to advance those into engineering design as far as the funding allows. Right. And now I guess the good the good part about this is with ten year plan money. You're, you're priming the pump, so to speak. You're, you're advancing things so that when you catch up to the 10-year plan funds, yep. you're not talking about, what do we want to do? It's this is what we'd like to do. We've already taken a couple of shots at some of these different options. We've got a better idea, ballpark estimate, what we're looking at because we've had some initial engineering design work completed. Yep. Okay. So it's accelerating the process that you would normally, if you hit just 10-year plan and started out from scratch, it would take your adding time. Okay. So... And I don't, I don't know if this is a question for you or for Bill, but let's assume that everything continues to move the way we want it to move within the transportation grant. Mm -hmm. The money then starts becoming available through the 10-year plan. First of all, that quarter of a million dollars, is, I believe, is the earmark for 2018. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the rest of the engineering money. Bill, at what point... Do we have to wait until all of the engineering design work is done before we could say go back to a federal highway to a Tiger Grant and say, all right, we have all of the details now that we need to ask for construction money? Or are we somewhere between the quarter of a million dollars and then the money that's out there in 2020? Is there a way we can apply for Tiger money knowing that not all of the design work is done, but a fair amount that at least gives us what we think is a budget to pay for this and to be able to submit into uh, Federal Highway? I think the um, part of it is an I de it depends answer. Um, certainly part of it is, is uh, dependent upon what the Tiger constraints are. So I think the round for Tiger this time that applications were submitted for construction has to start by September of 2019. I was going to say thank you. Mm -hmm. So three years from when funds are awarded, uh, construction has to be ready to begin. So if that continues to be the, the pattern, and we start engineering study or we start we start some of the engineering study as part of this master plan project and we continue it with with that first money that's in 18. Um, if you could get through the engineering study that's probably going to give you the right ballpark level of estimate that you would need to identify a number to put into a tiger application um, and that's probably about the right timing mm -hmm. to to apply for it to finish up the design in a two to three year time frame. Okay. All right. So with everybody knowing that, you know, just like this grant, this small little grant, it took us probably two and a half years to just from the time we were awarded to the time that we actually were able to get something going. So very similar, but in a much, much larger amount of money, kind of that time frame of when we would submit in a, an application we're probably still looking at two, maybe even three years out before actual uh, construction, right? Yep. Okay. All right, any other comments, questions? I suspect the task item two, which was a concern of um, Commissioner Griffin, 
Um, they, since we really haven't seen anything in terms of what their plans or suggestions are for that area, right. we'll see them in June? You will, yeah. The uh, summary the memorandum of existing conditions is due next week. Okay. And that's what the that's what the alternatives that are proposed uh, to address any identified deficiencies will be based on. Okay. And I will send a copy of that to you, John, when I get that. Okay. Is that what all the um, marks around the road have been about? No. 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 That's that's drainage work the District Six is doing. Oh. That they had to call in Dig Safe to make sure they've got all the utilities marked. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. But in order to, sorry, but in order to keep costs down, it was a lot of existing data and not a lot of Good. digging in the field. So That's where it should be. Okay. All right. Any other comments, questions? Hearing none, William, thank you so much for coming down. You're Appreciate welcome. it. And uh, we'll let you know through Bill uh, when in June uh, we'll call the special meeting. Okay. Thank you. Um, I might make note, um, you, you notice a very important person is missing uh, from this meeting. Um, who actually takes our notes, Ann. Um, Ann is uh, under the weather, um, but um, indicated and has already worked out with Channel 22 that once um, the meeting is over, uh, Channel 22 will get, get her a disc and uh, she will do up the minutes because she knows that uh, it's important to have these minutes uh, online as soon as possible after the meeting. So she'll be doing that. So. Uh, and um, if you're uh, once you hear this uh, meeting best wishes and get well soon Okay Next on the agenda chairman's report. Oh, I'm sorry review of the uh, April minute minutes uh, You all have them I'll go page by page just to make sure if there's any questions or edits page one Page two Page three, page four, page five, and page six. Hearing no uh, edits changes, um, I'll accept a motion to approve the minutes uh, of April 21st. Mr. Ladd made a motion. Do I have a second, Mr. Watson? Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Everybody was there, so there's no ex abstentions. Thank you. Chairman's report. Um, I got to thinking about the meeting that we did have with the planning board, and um, I'm going to recommend that um, starting in September, that we uh, do either a quarterly or a biannual um, meeting with the planning board uh, just to make sure that they are kept up to date on this transportation grant. Um, and so that, um, you know, as we get closer to um, making recommendations, uh, they will also be uh, kind of the, uh, a, an extra set of eyes for us to um, go to make sure that if as long, because the way I'm understanding it, Jason, as long as we continue to recommend recommendations within the master plan that does not require a change of the master plan, we can move forward with those recommendations. It's only if we come up with something totally different than what the master plan said, uh, we would then have to go back and ask for an amendment of that master plan. Is that, that correct? That was my understanding. Yeah. So as long as we keep within the recommendations set forth by the original master plan, um, the planning board is uh, okay with us continuing to move on without any type of formal approval process by the town or by the planning board. And, and just to add to that, John, I think the board is, is very interested, obviously, in the meetings in general and being updated. And I've started with the last meeting, the first meeting that we had in May, been updating on the monthly meetings. So. So on top of what you're proposing, there'll be regularly okay. monthly updates, or as we have meetings, update them. <laughs> okay. So if you can share that um, commission starting next fall, would like to start meeting with them more. Okay. Um, all right. As you know, we are uh, 
attending as a commission uh, the Board of Selectmen meeting this coming Monday night. Um, we have two items on their agenda uh, under, under the appointments. The first is to provide them um, our annual report, basically, uh, that we do every year, which you all have received a copy of. And by the way, um, Ann was kind enough, and I thought it would be good for you to put on your bookshelves at home um, the actual annual reports uh, of the Hampton Beach Area Commission going all the way back to 2003 when it was still part of the planning board reporting, um, all the way to uh, this last uh, report in 2015. So you all have that to kind of put on your bookshelves at home. Um, so I will, um, along with Mr. Watson, um, be giving the updated annual report to the, uh, to the board, uh, and that's agenda item number one. Um, as important, um, agenda item number two is to discuss with the Board of Selectmen um, going forward the recommendation by the Beach Commission to have the Town of Hampton uh, accept the responsibility of the maintenance of the sidewalks on the west side of Ocean Boulevard uh, from Ashworth and Ocean all the way up to uh, Ocean and High Street. Um, Winnicunnet Road. Winnicunnet Road, I'm sorry, thank you. Winnicunnet Road. Um, I have, I'm going to ask all of the commissioners that possibly can uh, come to this meeting. Um, I think this will be a, uh, a discussion uh, by both the Board of Selectmen and this commission in terms of the pros and cons. Um, but I think it's time um, and under our responsibility as a commission to advise and consult both state agencies and the local town I think this is appropriate for the Beach Commission to bring this forward uh, to the Board of Selectmen and to ask for their consideration um, and their adoption of um, what I'm going to suggest is our recommendation. Um, and that recommendation, uh, gentlemen, is, is very simple. I've printed it out just so that everybody has an opportunity to make sure that they would agree with the wording. <coughs> Uh, of it, but basically, I'll need one more copy over here, Bob. Can I get a copy? Thank you. The recommendation basically reads, after careful review and consideration, the Hampton Beach Area Commission is recommending to the Hampton Board of Selectmen that once the Ocean Boulevard reconstruction project has been funded and work has been completed, which would include a new roadway, new sidewalks, and new drainage, that the town take over the responsibility of maintenance of the sidewalks on the west side of Ocean Boulevard from the intersection of Ashworth Ave and Ocean Boulevard South End up to the corner of the Ocean Boulevard and High Street which is the north end, not Winnicunnet, it's High Street. That's where the master plan goes all the way up to. But it, there's no high, there's no sidewalks after uh, Winnicunnet Road. I don't believe, yes. and not only that, they're only talking about doing them to Winnicunnet Road. Okay, so, right. so let's, uh, let's, let's make it, that change right then. There are sidewalks, but they're not doing them. They're only doing them until Winnicunnet Road. Okay. Okay, but there, yeah. are, there are some. Yeah, there, there are right some, but okay. they're not even complete. Okay. So we can make that change in the in the recommendation. Um, thank you, Rick. Um, so what I'm asking all commissioners, because this is so important, um, is there any other changes that you would like in terms of the wording of this recommendation? Because I will be wanting to make a formal motion tonight just so it's very clear uh, that the commission did take a formal vote on this recommendation, and it would then be shown in the minutes that a formal vote was taken. Um, 
Bob, the wording, do you have anything to add to the wording of this? I'd like to say that we strongly, we feel very strongly in supporting the continued <coughs> transformation of Hampton Beach. You know, this process has gone for a while. We heard tonight some of these changes may not take place for eight years. And I think it's important for this Board of Selectmen you know, to support something that's going to happen a while from now. So I'd like to mention the continued transformation of Hampton Beach in some way. Okay. So if I was to read it this way, after careful review and consideration and wanting to continue the transformation of Hampton Beach, then go into the Hampton Beach Area Commission is recommending. Does that sound all right? Mm -hmm. I think at some point you should definitely stress about how long in the future this is. You know, I, I don't think people have a feeling of that at all. Yeah. But is that more, Rick, of a, a point in support of this versus within the motion itself? To me, um, you don't have to put it in the motion because you really don't know. Right. But at some point in your presentation, I would mention it. <coughs> yep. Because the way I see it is if the town isn't um, happy with any of their positions uh, with something they may have signed in 1933, they have eight years to fight it out and you know do something about it. But I mean, I think they should support this project and they should support you know what's being done here. Okay. And, you know, so I would just let them know that um, it's not for until the future. And why would we try to keep something back when this could be something good? And we can all work together and make it better. Okay. <clears throat> Bill, any comments on the motion itself before we formalize the motion? Chuck? Um, so the, the village district made a motion, and it was uh, unanimous supporting commission. And in that motion, we mentioned that there would be no, there wouldn't be any cash match, cash match by the town required <coughs> in security funds. I don't know if that's an issue with the selectmen that they think that they're going to have to come up with money on this end of this. From what I gather, it, the town isn't going to have to pay for any of this, and, the, and all this work is getting done. <coughs> uh, is that something that we might want to put into to this motion? We could put it either into the motion, if that's what you want, or we could put it in as a, once again, as a an additional reason why they should be in this motion. Well, we, we have it in our motion, yeah. and we're, um, we're submitting a letter okay. with, with different reasons. Signed by all three commissioners, unanimous by all three commissioners. So it, it doesn't have to go in. It's just a, a, a suggestion if you thought it might be necessary. I think it's a good idea. It might be easy to keep it simple. Well, let's hear from others. Fran? I just want to be clear that the town would assume maintenance but not ownership. Is that correct? The state would continue to own the real estate, the property? Bill, can you clarify that? If the project were to move forward exactly as it's scoped today, the town, the, the state would retain ownership. There's the opportunity for conversation in the next eight years, as, as Rick put it, to have conditions be very different. If, if a recent editorial is accurate that the town is interested in taking ownership back, that would be a conversation that could happen over the next eight years and be discussed. I don't know if that's an accurate representation. I think it's but, been said in the past. I have not heard anyone discussing that. But there's, so there's no, there's no expectation that ownership of the roadway will change as part of the conversation of a project that's in the tenure plan. Yeah, I, I guess I wasn't asking about the roadway. I was talking about the sidewalks, but it could include the roadway, I guess. The potential conflict is, you know, the town has one set of technical requirements, which may be different from the state in terms of access 
to the state highway, you know, driveway cuts, things like that. Um, and what may happen within your right of way, if that includes a sidewalk. Um, so. So if we just kept it simple with the word maintenance and and yeah, I just want to make it, make it sure everybody right. understands what what this says. That's all. Okay. But do you have a problem with them putting in about that it it is uh, like checks suggested? Should I read our motion? Yes. The Hampton Beach Village District supports the Hampton Beach Area Commission recommendation to the Board of Selectmen that they accept the responsibility of the sidewalks on the west side of Ocean Boulevard. Only when the DOT, only when the DOT secures federal and state funding, completes Ocean Boulevard reconstruction project. Note there would be there would not be any cash match. I can't say that very well. Cash match by the town required in securing those funds. Yeah, it, it's, that sounds it's, good. It, yeah, it's fine. I have no problem. I just want to make sure. The reason is, is I, I think that people seem to worry that, that somewhere along the line, a town is going to have to come up with millions of dollars to, to finish this project. And we know that's not the case. So if it's in there, it, it might um, mm -hmm. it might help, help concerns by some people. And Chuck has had ownership experience uh, heading the uh, of this building in the parking and everything here so he's had some good insight so would you be comfortable with that wording okay all right so we can add that in so that would be two ads so far and one edit anything Fran that you think other than those two oh, that's good. Bob I'm just wondering if you would identify the south end of Ocean Boulevard and Ashworth Avenue with a little more clarity, like what the first numbered house or ocean walk or some, some other identifier so it wouldn't be some quibbling at some point. Okay. But I'm open for a recommendation. I mean, I, I'm just thinking Ashworth Ave, where it joins with um, our Ocean Boulevard, where it starts with Ashworth Ave. That's where the sidewalks box start, but I don't yeah. think that's number one. Is that it would be easy on the corner of the, yeah. the famous the intersection. used to be. Yeah, the apex or whatever. So the start of the, of the, what yeah. the famous word, the donut, the start of it, the I don't point. know the point. That's where the sidewalks start. Okay. So what would be the proper wording? It's uh, rather than Ashworth Ave and, and Ocean Boulevard. Where they first intersect at the south end of Ocean Boulevard. I think that's what John said. What, what from the Ocean sidewalks Boulevard. on the west side of Ocean Boulevard, from the intersection of Ashworth and Ocean Boulevard. Yeah, that's what it is. It's yeah. an intersection. Some okay. point that it's town land and it's state yeah. land. Then, okay. You know, there's a I can't remember the name of the place, but it's next to Stacy. It's busy on the corner. Is that what it's called? But, but I mean, if if we're saying it's the intersection of Ashworth and Ocean, that yeah, I mean, rather than the describing the variety store, that's the, that's yeah. the intersection. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mike? No. Okay. All right, so let me let me take a stab at this. It's nine Ocean Boulevard. And that's what I thought it was. After careful review and consideration and wanting to continue the transformation of Hampton Beach, the Hampton Beach Area Commission is recommending to the Hampton Board of Selectmen that once the Ocean Boulevard reconstruction project has been funded and has been completed including new roadway, new sidewalks, and new drainage, and also at no cash cost to the town of Hampton within the project, it then will take over the responsibility of the maintenance of the sidewalks on the west side of Ocean Boulevard from the intersection of Ashworth Ave and Ocean Boulevard South End up to the corner of Ocean Boulevard and Winnicunit in the North End. Does that sound all right to everybody? Yes. Perfect. Okay, so then with those changes, can I then have a motion? Um, and then let's take a vote. I'll make the motion. Second. Motion made by Mr. Rage, second by Mr. Preston. Any further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor of this recommendation, uh, this motion uh, to the Board of Selectmen Raise your hands, please. 
I'm noting for the uh, for the public, uh, we have eight affirmatives, uh, one absent, and one no. Uh, no no's. Excuse me. No no's. Okay. Then we will make this um, as part of our meeting, and um, I'm going to uh, ask my fellow Hampton Commissioner uh, to assist us with this uh, motion in front of the Board of Selectmen. Okay. Next on my uh, report, um, just as you all know, the Intermodal Center Route 101 interchange uh, was voted on by the Board of Selectmen. Um, uh, we did make a formal recommendation, if you recall, uh, that we would uh, support them taking out the uh, bus station concept on 101, uh, but wanted to keep it open for possible off-site remote parking for the beach. Um, as you all probably know, the vote was to um, do away with the bus station concept keep the uh, interchange reconfiguration uh, on the table. And my interpretation for the balance of that was that since there was no decision one way or the other to talk about any other uses within that interchange um, and that our recommendation of it being still considered um, as a um, remote parking area for the beach uh, was not taken up for discussion one way or the other. Um, that, to me, it leaves the door open uh, for further discussions of the use of that land going forward um, and to, to be uh, working with the Rockingham Planning Commission going forward um, and, and looking at different options that we could go back to the Board of Selectmen with. I mean, that's my interpretation, but once again, I'm open for anybody else any other commissioners that might have a different interpretation of what I got from those two motions by the Board of Selectmen. Mikey, I don't think you were around, so Bob, any any thought on that? Just that. Is there an alternative that could go up as that plan B and not just get lost because the emphasis is entirely on the intermodal piece? A, a short-term parking approach rather than a 10-year possibility. I know some ideas were thrown around about the use of the school parking lots mm -hmm. for business, worker car placement. Mm -hmm. I would just hate to think that that would get lost if this is sidetracked. Yep. Well, I mean, it, it, it could be a uh, another recommendation by the com commission that that they continue to look at other alternatives on the short-term basis, whether or not it's the use of a school parking lot or to look for a, uh, a, a pilot project uh, and funding for that pilot project where we could we could use a public property uh, to create a temporary remote parking area for the beach. I mean, we, we could do that as a recommendation by the, by the commission. Um, and not necessarily, um, you know, uh, <coughs> not necessarily identify it as uh, an area within the 101 interchange. Okay. So. Fran? No, I'm good. Okay. Rick? Bob? Anything? You no. want to add to that? Okay. Bill? No. Chuck? No. Okay. All right. Um, that ends my chairman report. Treasurer's report, Mike. Yep, we're still uh, balance of eleven thousand three hundred and fifty-one dollars and forty-three cents. Okay, no change. And I did get in the mail uh, this week a invoice for the town of Hampton for four hundred eighty-eight dollars uh, for our administrative services uh, going from January to April. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to authorize. Uh, Dread State Parks to pay the 488 out of our general account uh, for the secretarial services. <coughs> Do I have a second? Uh, second by Mr. Griffin. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. If you can bring that up, Mike, Thank you. and uh, do me a favor.
just tear off that yellow piece and I'll take it that one back for my copy. Thank you. Um, under old business, one thing that I um, don't want to lose sight of, but I'm going to suggest that maybe in the fall might be a better time for us to reconsider some fundraising ideas of getting a little bit more money into our uh, account. So um, I just would ask that, um, you know, as we reconvene in the fall, for people to start thinking about how we could uh, raise a little bit of money to put into our general account. Um, is there any other old business that I've forgotten about? John, when can I talk about a couple of things on this um, meeting coming up Monday for the Boulevard? Do you want to talk to the old business or new business or what? We can bring it up now. Okay. I went out for a walk the other night. I, I went down to the south end of the beach, you know, starting at, at Dover Street. And I walked up and down. I took 100 pictures. I could have some of them there for you. But that is the entrance way to Hampton Beach. Everybody that walks in or drives into Hampton, this is their first thing. They, well, they see the bridge, the boats, and that's nice. Pease has done a lot to uh, enhance you know, the harbor side, and, and, and Mike is working on the state park side. And then we drive through this area where the road was awful. You know, you, you leave the road and the side of the road, you might see either the, the last cover overlay or maybe the overlay before that. And then it goes into a, a sandbox before you, you come up to a sidewalk that we found out tonight might not get replaced for eight years. So thinking that this might be perhaps the densest part of the whole town of Hampton when it comes to the cottages and the summer population. I, I don't see any way that it doesn't make sense to redo this road. You have all those people, I mean it's a thousand people, it's more than that, that walk through those crappy sidewalks all the way up to the center. I think if we did that, I mean the money part of Hampton Beach will continue to get fixed. I mean we see it with the condos, you see it with the, in front of the nice businesses. They all go fix their own mess so that people don't get hurt. But on the South Beach, it's like they don't, they don't, not that they don't care, maybe they don't have the money, maybe they don't know where the lot line is. But I think the South Beach might have the biggest single impact of this whole project. And I think the people down that end of the beach might want to think about it and come talk to us on Monday. Okay. So I walked the same road. And I noted some of the sidewalks there, not the, just the bad sidewalks. We know there's bad sidewalks the whole way down Ocean Boulevard. But some of those sidewalks are less than three feet wide. I, I don't know what they're even there for. So the reason, the, the, the danger of the sidewalks that are, that are existing is because they're so bad, everybody walks in the middle of the road. And we've seen horrible accidents of whether someone fell asleep at the wheel because they were out partying all night. Um, that happened on Ocean Boulevard last year. And I mean, these people are walking in the middle of the road. Well, not quite the middle of the road, but on the side of the road. And there isn't a sidewalk. There isn't a curb to even protect them from a car going off. So I, I think it, it just, anybody that has any questions should walk from, from the beginning of the south side of the beach down and, and you just see the desperate need. So I, I think we have to move forward. We're moving forward everywhere. And, this, and if we don't do this, we, it's just setting us back. Mike, any comments? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm down there as a user. I, I stay down there. I'm in that area. And, you know, I agree that it's, it's not the best place, the first place to see as you come on to Ocean Boulevard and, and the walking. You know, you're in the street as you're walking up. And, so. And I and I think um, and, and and Mike said he'll try to come on Monday night. Um, but he and I and uh, Phil Bryce talked earlier, and and I think we have at least a, a, a verbal commitment by State Parks uh, to continue their efforts on uh, the maintenance of the east side of the sidewalks, including uh, snow plowing in the winter time, as long as there's funding available. Um, but I think, you know, State Parks is willing to play part as, as our partners down there to, to take care of their side. Um, 
Bob, I can't wrap my head around the state willing to put up six to eight million dollars and are questioning whether the town should put up some minuscule number to get that eight million or six million. I just don't think it's, I think it's a no-brainer. Fred? No. Rick? I hope that people will come and uh, comment during public comment. It's not a public meeting, but er everyone's entitled to um, come and talk at public comment. And um, I think it's important to realize it's not going to happen for some time and that a typical uh, summer, or summer, I mean winter, like we had this winter, there was like no, um, you know, nothing would have been spent on those sidewalks. And because they do seem to be most concerned about the snow plowing. Um, we've already had answered to, a, you know, by checking with our insurance coverage, the, our insurance coverage doesn't change at all. It won't cost any more. Um, and even when worse came to worse last year, all that was spent was 500000 and that was for the whole town, including all of the snow that, that, that was removed from down here at the beach, which the town had no you know, worked with the state and got to deposit all the snow over here at the state park. Everyone worked together. And, you know, even that, if the worst comes to worse, it's not that bad. It's not something that can't be handled. And this is only a small amount of what the town, you know, I can't see it really costing very much money at all. Um, <clears throat> generally, these sidewalks are very walkable. Sometimes the ones on the east side uh, get a lot of snow um, plowed up against them. And I think there are some concerns about what happens with that snow. But as you've just said, the state's going to take care of that. Mm -hmm. And from what I've heard other people say, that even if they had to um, push the uh, off the sidewalks into the street, it wouldn't be a problem. Someone mentioned that. So I don't really see it being a big problem, and I, I think it's something. If the town's not happy, whatever their agreement with the t state, uh, they should take care of it. They'll have eight years to flush it out. And I think that we all should be encouraged and positive and continue to improve Hampton Beach because it only is better for the town as a whole. Okay. Bill, I didn't want to uh, forget you. Do you... Do you have any comments? I, I think you, you you had mentioned to me that you're preparing something that you probably will have by Monday from the commissioner. And I think one of the the questions that people people have asked us about is where does the commissioner stand? And you know we're not interested in in creating a burden for Hampton or any other community. Um, and we are committed to working with the community to to figure out how best to help uh, make improvements down here. Um, and as of the conversations I've had with the commissioners, because um, there are three of them that I work with, um, no one is looking to push the issue of sidewalk maintenance prior to any work being done down here. So it does give us that opportunity for that eight-year conversation, if that's what's necessary, to work out a lot of details um, but like the, the village district and like the beach commission, we're, we're looking to submit a letter supporting um, the town taking over the maintenance and have that conversation as part of the, the construction phase of the project. Okay. One of the things, and I think I, I um, sent it to you via email, but... Um, Jennifer Hale, the uh, Deputy Director of, of uh, Public Works, was kind enough. Uh, I did have some questions because I was curious on some of the things about sidewalks in the town of Hampton. And so I sent her, um, you know, very basic questions, but questions uh, or answers that I, I didn't know about. Um, and, I, and I think one thing that really hit home is I drove from the intersection of Ocean and Ashworth all the way up to, uh, to Winnicott. 
and it's less than 2.5 miles. Um, and so that's what we're talking about in terms of sidewalk. Uh, a little bit, 2.4, 2.5 miles of sidewalk. In the entire town, uh, the town owns 21 miles of sidewalk. So what we're suggesting, put it in simple terms, is that we're, all we're asking is for the town to take over another 2.5 million, I mean 2.5 miles of, of roadway. 10%. And uh, they also gave me some really interesting figures that, um, as Rick alluded to, um, they spent uh, in 2015 a uh, little over $400,000 in total snow removal. Um, and that was in a very bad year. Um, and then, just out of curiosity, she did share with me uh, where the sidewalks are plowed during the winter. And one, one interesting comment on this is because I noticed that all of the letter streets uh, off of Ocean Boulevard, uh, which is owned by the town, uh, are right now not taken care of by the town, maintained by the town in the wintertime. Um, and taxes are coming for those residents. Um, and to me, it's, it's like, well, you know, if, if I'm uptown uh, on Winnicunit, I get my sidewalk plowed. But if I'm on uh, C Street, down on the beach, I don't get my sidewalk plowed. So um, this was just a bit of information and I think helps with our uh, thought process with regard to asking for them to, uh, to consider our recommendation. And um, I would encourage um, everybody that's listening to this meeting uh, prior to Monday night, if you have uh, an opinion one way or the other, please attend the, 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 the meeting. Uh, the Board of Selectmen on Monday at 7 o'clock. Anybody else want to bring up anything regarding the board meeting? If not, uh, we'll move to new business. Um, as you remember, we had a very successful uh, pilot project uh, that we worked with the Hampton Police Department with regard to summer traffic control. And um, I don't want to leave it on the table, I'll leave it not on the table for something for this summer that might occur. So uh, I'm going to request a meeting with uh, Chief Sawyer uh, to see, first of all, if he has any plans through his uh, summer projects on anything that would be similar or complementary to what we did with them last summer um, and see what he suggests and, and maybe we could look at once again, somehow teaming up, partnering um, on some traffic control ideas, which only can help uh, in terms of, once again, the movement of traffic in the summertime, but also giving us a broader idea of what needs to be done in the future. So uh, nobody has any um, issues with that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll meet with the chief and um, uh, get back to all of you with what we discuss. Um, Prior to tonight's meeting, we also had our spring meeting that we hosted with State Parks, and I've asked Mike just to say a few words on what came out of that meeting tonight. Yeah, thanks, John. Um, yeah, so we had that meeting 5 o'clock tonight at the Sea <coughs> Show. Probably had, I think we had just about 25 people showed up. Um, it's a good turnout. We had, we went for about an hour and a half, um, had some good conversations, some ideas, uh, different things, just some of the different updates. Um, they were updated at South Beach. Some of the park improvements with the landscaping at front at the front end of South Beach that you might have seen. Um, we've done some work. We're renovating the store there. The admin building, the bathhouses have been uh, updated and worked on on the outsides. Um, there's a parking lot. The drainage project is actually finished. I think it finished up today. Actually, the parking lot drainage at South Beach. So hopefully that'll uh, do what it was intended to do. Um, talked about parking at South Beach a little bit, our extended hours, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday nights until 10.30. Um, talked about expanding that a little bit um, as well with the staff. Um, some of the projects further up at the main beach, the railings, 
the railings as you walk on the boardwalk. We are going to, uh, we have a project slated to start in September where we will start replacing some of the worse railings in that area. I think we're, we're spending between $100,000 and $200,000 on that. Um, the beach grading has been completed and the raking has started and we've got a new contractor that our staff is, is so far happy with, or is seeing some good work. They've been good to work with so far, so that's good. The beach is um, looking good. Um, just jumping back to South Beach, one of the things we talked about, some of the, in the, was how do we get word out to, you know, let people know the hours, the bathroom hours, the, the parking, and things like that. So we, we talked about a couple of electronic message boards, things like that. So I know, John, that was, Something that got brought up by a few people, just how do we let people know where and when they can park there. So that's, that'll be something we'll be looking at. Um, we had some of our staff there, um, lifeguards, Ted Parr parking, you know, with Calais, our Calais machines, or we've had, we had some upgrades to the Calais machines, um, all around PCI compliance, and we're working out some of the, uh, you know, we've Parking's been mostly free, most pretty much all of April and well into May. Um, our, it's, it's getting better, um, we, we, so we're, we're finally now have the machines up and running and, and collecting money in them, which is good. Um, the uh, Senator Stiles updated every, on the uh, park plate, the SB 510, where if people, if you have a state park plate, you can park there from September 15th to June 15th during the week for free with the park plate. I know that's been something that it, Charlie's been working on in Senator Stiles for a few years now, and it looks like that's finally gonna go through. Um, what else, John, anything else? Um, you know, I th I think a good turnout, you know, yeah. a lot of compliments to the yep. staff. You know, Brian and his team down here heard, heard some compliments tonight in the crowd. Um, some different ideas that, you know, I wrote down some notes. Um, somebody mentioned Salisbury has trash barrels for pizza boxes only, which I thought was interesting. I think we'll take a look at that. You know, the big, large pizza boxes that either get left outside the trash barrels that you see on the sidewalk. And so I think we'll take a look at that, see if that's something we can implement down there. And just some some different smaller ideas in and around the park. So it was good. Those the meetings have become productive over time. Yeah, I, I remember four years ago when we had the first one, uh, it was standing room only. Yeah, yeah right. And um, there were probably more concerns than recommendations, but as the years have now progressed, um, that has dwindled, and we're getting, uh, I should say, State Parks is getting more uh, positive comments, positive recommendations, um, because of the work that they do. So um, it was probably, I, I'm gonna say, I guess, maybe 30, 35 people. Yeah, um, yeah, with staff, and uh, one last, the, uh, just the, uh, one of the things, talking about is the, the shade structures in front of the seashell. We, our staff, our architect, and Phil, our director, were down meeting with Fred Rice a few weeks back, and we're talking about removing a couple of sections of the, of the shade structures there right in front of the seashell to improve the view from the other side of the street. So it's, it's something that's being talked about and looked into, and, and then we, you know, we would want to replace those shade structures at some other point in and around the area down there to make sure it's, they are popular people we do you, you everybody that's down there sees people sit under the shade shade structures uh, quite a bit and like those down there so but we are talking about having a couple of those chunks taken out of there and which will Im improve the view to the stage but so that was another thing we talked about okay thank you mike any any other comments from mike hearing none um now that we're going to be having a meeting uh, in June, I will try to put together the transportation in-kind report um, that we need to vote on uh, so that we, know we don't have to have a special meeting over and above the transportation meeting in, in uh, June. So I'll try to get that report out. Um, and that would include our participation in that uh, transportation grant meeting in June. Uh, May meeting agenda items, um, what I meant by that was that uh, once again over the summer, which I've always encouraged the commissioners to do, anything that you um, think would be important for us to tackle um, in the uh, coming year, starting in September, 
uh, please uh, shoot me off an email, uh, share an idea, a recommendation of some of the things that you would like to get the Commission working on uh, starting in September, um, and I will make sure that at our September meeting those would be included. Um, emergency meeting plan for the summer, once again, as always, if something does come up uh, unexpected, um, that I do have to call a special meeting uh, of the Commission. I will uh, let everybody know. Um, and uh, uh, we've been uh, very responsive. Everybody's been very responsive to those types of quick emergency meetings. Uh, but uh, I will let everybody know if we need to have one. Um, that's it for new business for me. Is there anybody else that has any new business that they would like to bring up? Well, on another matter before we run out, uh, there's another organization in town, Experience Hampton, that is benefiting from the gaming this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, at uh, Ocean Gaming. Uh, Experience Hampton has done a lot of nice things in town with the walkways and some, some new lighting that's coming up, and we have uh, a lot of other things in the works, so anybody that's inclined to go down and wants a night out, wants to go out and gamble, um, feel free to stop in. There'll be um, several people on the Experience Hampton Board of Directors there uh, Friday. Saturday night from 6.30 on, maybe 7 on. And any friends of Ocean um, of Experience Hampton are welcome to stop in and say hello. Yeah. Any other comments, thoughts? Um, sure. Just a reminder, if you have a chance, at 5.30 at the Seashell stage is the Grand March for the Winter Cullen High School Junior Prom. So that's pretty cool. And there are also the Continental will be playing, uh, playing. And if anybody thinks they want to sleep in on Sunday morning, uh, the <laughs> tow show is on this weekend, and the tow truck parade will be going by their houses. So just beware when you're hearing all the horns honking. Uh, you will not sleep Sunday morning. That's it. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Well, um, I'll um, accept the motion to adjourn. Pick a Motion made by Mr. Preston John. and second by Mr. Hausman. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Are you going to pick a June meeting date? Oh, look at yes, this? thank you. All right, will, will you all get out your calendars for June? Is this a quick meeting? Yes, this will be strictly on the transportation grant. So on the 15th. Maybe the third. Maybe the third Thursday? I mean, we don't want to get too close to the fourth. No. But on the 15th, we have a meeting here at 5.30. If we want to maybe have it before the meeting, then 22 will be here. I don't know if that's something. If we want to come in early at 4.30, can you do something like that? Um, it's, yeah, it's a planning board. That's a good idea. Earlier, right? Yeah, it'd be, it'd be early, like 5 o'clock. That's good. Earlier. Well, our meeting here starts at 5.30, the, the village district meeting. So it would be after that, right? No, it would be before. You could do it maybe before it, or if, if that would yep, work for people. Sounds good. For anybody? Yeah. You think that would be workable in terms of rather than late uh, a, a night, maybe we could start, I, I would say, 4 o'clock? Just because I, yep. I wouldn't want, I mean, if, if uh, Gordon and, and William, you know, comes in with a, a really good presentation, I don't want to be like looking at 5.30 and saying, oh, we've got to get, you know. Mm -hmm. So if I say 4 o'clock on the 15th. Is the precinct going to spring for free parking? We'll, we'll spring for parking. Okay. Middle of June. It, it, was, July. it was July. You're on, you're on your own. <laughs> All right, so. What about 4.30? <laughs> Is it going to be any more than an hour? I think that if you give it at 4, it's, it leaves the hour and, and plus whatever chit-chat we have afterwards as we're leaving and the uh, precinct to setting up and and the, and the precinct meeting is normally the second Wednesday but that we, we changed it to the third Wednesday so that's why it's on the 15th mm -hmm. if you had appointments you can come in after say yeah, close to 4 30 no, it doesn't matter okay for me all right so four o'clock it is on the 15th of June Bill you let William know and I'll have it posted as a uh, a, uh, a meeting of the Beach Commission for the 15th, 4 o'clock here. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Now we have the motion and seconded to adjourn. All in favor? Opposed?
Thank you, and Channel 22, thank you very much.